Millions and millions of people are pretty much going to job boards today and they are literally submitting a form of a resume. And you might be one of those people who are literally finding it so difficult to get callbacks. Now, most people think that actually submitting a resume is just about enough or having experience is just about enough. But actually the truth is, if everybody had the right amount of experience, why is that those with little experience or very little idea of what actually the job is all about seem to master a way to get callbacks by recruiters and land themselves their dream jobs? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to get callbacks within 48 hours using applications like DeepSeek, a very simple AI tool that basically can create a resume for you literally within a couple of seconds or minutes and then you can tweak that to basically create a resume that will stand out from the crowd. So the first thing we need to understand is how do job boards actually work? So first of all is the hiring process or the hiring description. You've got a hiring manager who will actually sit down and decide on what are the skill sets we need to fulfill in a role. Let's take the web developer for example. So we've got a web developer that has certain skill sets that we need that person to have they will create what is called a job description. On the back of the job description, that is posted onto a job board. It is your job as the applicant to create a resume that matches the job description. However, the issue that most people find is that they just copy and paste the job description as their resume. Now I'm gonna show you how DeepSeek can actually create a resume for you that you can tweak and you can stand out from the crowd. Now we need to understand how do job boards actually work. Now you've got a hiring manager that has got a description and they post it onto a job board. Now you can imagine what's going to happen. You see the application as the applicant and tens of thousands of applications come in. Now there's no way one hiring manager is going to sift through hundreds and hundreds of resumes. What actually happens is that they use what we call an ATS system. And the ATS system is basically an application tracking system. And what this basically does, it basically ensures that it sieves through these hundreds and hundreds of resumes that are coming through the system and only picks the best one. Now, what is actually the ATS system doing? It will look for three main things. One is keywords, two is duration of experience, and the third one is achievements. When it comes to keywords, it will look for keywords in the industry in which you are in. So if you're a web developer, most likely you're gonna be putting things around coding languages and delivery methods. If you're in the medical space, you might put it about medical procedures, medical devices. And if you're in the media space, you might put things around the marketing strategy and strategy methods. And those are keywords that the system will actually be looking for. Most likely the hiring manager will set those keywords and says, if those keywords are not in the resume, reject. And that's probably the reason why you get that automated rejection message because you're thinking, I literally submitted it a minute ago and I haven't even made a coffee and yet I'm being rejected. Most likely the ATS system has scanned your resume and it's just not the right one. So let's get past this shortly with using DeepSeek. The second one is experience. Most times a resume won't have enough years of experience. If an application or a job board ad is asking for three to five years of experience, the minimum you should be providing is the three years that it requires. Hence the reason why sometimes you might get the automatic rejection where your CV at your resume is only under the three years. Therefore, automatically it will be rejected. The next one is evidence of achievement. Now, the ATS system will also look for evidence of achievement. And there's a really, really good way to do this, which is called the X, Y, and Z method. And this is actually coined by a former Google a senior a president who talked about how applicants should really be applying for their roles using the X, Y, and Z method. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later on in, in this, in this uh, tutorial. But specifically, achievements are important things to include in your resume. And basically by doing that, you're evidencing not just that you are you know, experienced in your field, but how you are experienced in your field and what you have contributed in your field of work. Before we go into DC, just wanna go through a structure of a resume. Now a resume will contain a professional summary, which is basically an overview of what you have done and what you're looking to achieve. Just a general two sentences about yourself and where you are and where you're going. The next bit will be about core competencies. That will be around all the skill sets that you have, mainly around the keywords in your industry space. The third aspect of it is the bulk of your resume, which will actually include all your experiences and where you have worked, but also importantly, it also includes all your achievements within those companies. And then the final one is pretty much inclusion of your achievements and any references. Now let's get into exactly how to create a resume using DeepSeek. The first thing you want to do is when you log into DeepSeek, is you need to think about the top of the pile analogy. And how I say this is, 
if you are looking for a web developer role, and you're gonna use the web developer role for the most part of it, you don't just want to create any web developer role. So I'm gonna give you an example. So let's say for example, I'm gonna ask, you know, DeepSeek to do this. So create a, create a uh, web developer resume, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to create me a web developer resume. So it gives you a professional summary. You're then followed by your technical skills. You've got a professional experience, which is great. And then you've also got all the other companies that you probably potentially worked for. So you can actually just use this resume from DeepSeek, copy and paste it, and then you know tweak it to what is applicable to yourself. However, the next best thing is actually the top of the pile analogy. And what you will then do is slightly change the question you are asking DeepSeek. So let's do this. So you can see, and I just want to go into a bit more detail, you can see actually that the experience here is around things that you know that developers have done, like developed and maintained responsive websites, great. Um, they've implemented RESTful API, great. But they haven't got a lot about achievements. And the difference between that is they haven't given you how they've actually achieved it. And this is what makes a lot of people stand out. But in order to do that and not to use too much brain power, as we don't always want to do, is I'm going to change that question very ever so slightly. So I'm going to copy that over. I'm going to re-ask DeepSeek a different question. I'm actually going to ask it for create me a senior web developer resume. Now I'm not applying for a senior web developer role, but there's something in there that's going to give me a little bit more structure. And this is all about the achievements. I've been freelancing for multiple years and I've learned that in any case you need to evidence how and literally how you're going to achieve, your, how you've actually delivered, how you've actually delivered a role in the company, be it junior or be it senior. And in a senior role, it just somehow seems to provide you that insight. And I want to show you how maybe a junior web developer can do exactly the same. So let's go into it in a bit more detail. So when you scroll back up, you will see that there is a little bit more effort provided in terms of the achievement. So in the in the senior web developer role, you got it implements agile methodology, but it also did that and what the impact was by improving team productivity and reducing project delivery times by 25%. That's not what we have in the you know standard web developer resume. Another thing it provides as well is developer, for example, it developed a real-time chat application in WebSock and React, improving customer support response by basically 30%. The key is that it's not just saying what it's done, it's basically explained how it's done that. And that's the key to actually creating a resume. In any situation, you are having to show evidence of actually how you've achieved that. Now, this is a very interesting concept because this was coined by, again, the former Google president. And he said that when people are applying for Google, they should be using the X, Y, and Z method. And the X, Y, and Z method, basically, the X is the accomplishment. What have you actually accomplished? And the Y being the measurable. What? How have you measured that? How have you been successful in that? And the Z is what did you do to actually achieve that? Another example of using the X, Y, and Z method, and this is how you can do this, is maybe the web designer accomplishment. Let's say for example, there's a web designer and said, I've increased web traffic. But also you can add that piece of, I've increased web traffic by 55% over six months through SEO friendly code structuring, um, HTML tags, meta titles. So you can see that the increased web traffic is the accomplishment, which we have in most resumes, but actually most people miss the measurable, which is, the 55% over six months, followed by actually what they actually did to achieve that. And if you follow this structure and you use, you know, AI like basically deep sea, you can actually actually create a resume that stands out at the top of the pile. So what you're actually doing is when you go one step up in seniority in any industry and you leverage some of that, you know, you know, accomplishment or structure of accomplishment, you can actually create a CV in your space where you are, maybe you're a junior web developer, that stands out from the crowd. And that's how you can use literally powerful AI tools like this to build resumes that stand out from the crowd and that get you callbacks. My two bonus tips are basically the ideal days to apply. Um, the best days to apply are basically your Mondays, your, Tues your Tuesdays and your Wednesdays. Um, according to a study done by uh, Bright.com, they said that the outcome is 30% more likely for people that apply for a job on a Monday and they are more likely to get to the next hiring process. And I can't stress enough, a Monday 
as much as it can be really annoying, are one of the best days to actually apply for a job. Now, the Tuesdays and Wednesday, Wednesdays are days that you can apply because maybe the Monday applicants maybe has, hasn't actually gone well and hasn't fallen through. So therefore, what you end up having to do is that those recruiters will call you back, maybe your second or third in the line. But Mondays are absolutely one of the best days to actually apply for a job. The second is the ideal times to apply for a job. Now, again, a study by bright.com said that mornings between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m are one of the best times to apply for a job. And I'll explain why. If you think about recruiters, they tend to land at their desk around about 9, 9.30, 10 a.m. Ideally, if you can apply just before they're getting their foot in the door, your resume will be at the top of the pile. By probably 11 or 12, they've read a few hundred of resumes and they're probably most likely going to be exhausted. So if you can get your resume submitted right before they get through the door, most likely your resume will be the first to be seen. I've done this tons and tons of time and been very, very successful. Anyway guys, that's enough from me. See you on the next one. Take care, bye now.